What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, Jake here, and uh, we're sitting in the bushcraft shelter today trying to get out of the rain, and uh, of course since it is raining I really didn't get to uh, shoot the video I wanted to, so we're going to just make this work, so kind of what the plan is today is, this wasn't originally supposed to be a standalone video, but I figured it would be interesting nonetheless, so I got a little bit of a story for you guys. So to add a little bit of background to this, I come across this YouTube video um, talking about how in the 1750s, kind of to the 1820s, when Tennessee, especially the eastern part of Tennessee, was still considered the frontier, that many Appalachians, or Appalachians, however you want to say it, lived, there are not many, but some lived in these hollowed out sycamore trees. And I'm not going to go too much into that because the guy that made this video did a lot of research put a lot of time into it. I don't want to take anything away from him. I'll probably link that down in the description. But it's just very interesting to listen to this guy in this YouTube video talk about how some Appalachians did, in fact, live in hollowed out sycamore trees. And that got me thinking. So, I live in East Tennessee. You know, not in the Appalachians. I really live on the Cumberland Plateau, so kind of close to the area. And uh, so that, that, that lifestyle would have applied to the people that lived uh, in this area during the frontier days. So we're talking 1750s to 1820s. And there was a story, and this story was told by my papa's dad, so it'd be my great-grandpa. And basically the story goes, and they lived around here at the time, the story goes was him and his brother were had went somewhere, you know, back then, you walk everywhere, you know, they didn't have cars. I mean, my great-granny, who was married to him, remembers the first car coming down her road, and they didn't know what it was, just to kind of give you how old they were. So, of course cars around but they couldn't afford them because here's a very poor area so they were walking everywhere and uh whatever happened my grandfather my great grandfather's brother left later than he did and he was walking home and at the end of their road was this big hollowed out sycamore stump and uh so he got scared walking home in the dark and ran home as fast as he could and the reason he said he ran home was because of the sycamore man. So the way the story goes is that there was a man who lived in a hollowed out sycamore tree and they come to cut the tree down and he refused to leave so they cut his head off as they was cutting the tree down. And apparently he haunted that sycamore tree. And of course it really just turned out that that story was just made up just because a boy was scared and he didn't want to be embarrassed. But I really did find that story, I always found that story really interesting. What I found more interesting was when I come across that video of people, Appalachians, close to the area that I live, actually living in hollowed out sycamore trees. And I just think it's interesting, it goes to show how stories are evolved through um, true events. So this story of the sycamore man, which is as it's been known in my family, is nothing more than just uh, a family wives tale, you know, a family tall tale, and it's all it is. I mean, I, it could be a bigger story, but I don't, I've never heard it anywhere else except for my family. But, you know, upon the finding of the video of people talking about living in sycamores in Appalachia, and then that relating directly to the story of the sycamore man is just, I find it quite interesting. And you know, so it kind of got me thinking, and it really got me to the point of, I really wanted to share it as well, is how history is so intertwined into our day-to-day -day life. I mean, everything that we do today is somehow intertwined with things that happened before us. And that's why I think it's so important that we don't forget you know, the old times. That's why I love getting out and, you know, building this bushcraft shelf. And of course, I got a modern day tarp and stuff, but it's kind of allows us to get back to our roots and kind of live or at least um, practice and just pretend basically that we're living the way they did and kind of experience the life that they experienced on a, on a lot low, lower of a scale. So, of course, this is a very short video. Um, you know, I really didn't plan on making this a full weekend video, but it's absolutely pouring the rain. I really had nothing else to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little story. I think I'm going to call this series uh, Stories of the Cumberland Plateau. 
because uh, I do have some more interesting stories, um, some more just kind of wives' tales and things that I've done in my research about my county. You know, the story of how my town got its name is a very interesting story, and it's a, it's a very true story as well. I mean, it is recorded in history. My county's had some interesting things happen to it. So if you guys want to see some of these more historical videos, just go ahead and let me know, and I can, of course, I'll do more research and give you a little bit more detailed stories on those. This was a pretty pretty vague one. It's really more about the wives' tale itself, and I don't want to go too much into someone else's video. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Go ahead and give me a like. Um, comment if you want to see more of this, and if you're even more interested, go check out that video I'm going to put in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, can't wait to get back and get into it next weekend. I'm going to do a little bit of competition shooting training, so if you're into that, go ahead and be ready for that coming probably next Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Jake signing off.